I guess in the long and short of it, no one would sense is probably sitting here blaming Travis Scott for all what that occurred on that fateful night, right? On that unfaithful night, on that flipping tragic night. No one's accusing him of the fact. But he did contribute, obviously, to it in some extent. Because once it was known that people were passing out to that extent, especially, you know, usually at these festivals, there's always somebody on the ground that has maybe a line to other people. There's always a chain of command, but a way to kind of report what's going on right on the ground. It might not, it might take a while to get to the person that makes the decisions, but there's always a person that can kind of relay things back, right? And maybe after the gates got stormed, you still don't think it's going to be that crazy because that happens at every single Travis Scott show, right? People storm the gates, you see festival pictures of, of other people storming gates, other people's shows. It happens quite often. These kids get too excited and they want to be viral. They take pictures of themselves storming gates. They run over, cops chase them. It's all it's all part of the fun and game of them kind of going out nowadays, right? It's a bit silly because obviously it can, it can be tragic, but you get why some kids want to do that sort of stuff. Fair. But then once you know that in the event itself with the energy and excitement of the crowd that things are happening really bad at the actual show he should have took it within his own self to maybe pause it for a prolonged period of time or cancel it at that point some would say he couldn't because of apple da, 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 but in that occasion considering how many people that were there i think they said it was 50 50 000 plus maybe more because obviously it was way over capacity because people stormed the gates and they couldn't get those people out after the fact if it was maybe close to a hundred thousand he should have paused it for a considerable time to make sure the crowd calmed down to make sure the medical services could get the people out that needed to help and that would have maybe Again, if buts or maybes, we don't know, but I'm sure that could have contributed to maybe limiting the amount of hospitalization and maybe even the amount of deaths going forward. But continuing on with the show, which inevitably led people to be more boisterous and whatever it may be, is kind of what contributed to this kind of tragic event now at the moment where we have, you know, eight people dead and counting, right? Because I think there's a couple of people now on, on life support and shit, which is just a tragic, tragic, tragic story. And then to get off the back of it, Obviously, families are now kind of hitting Astro World with lawsuits and stuff. I think here it says it's lawsuits are hit up to 19 with most naming Travis Scott as defendant. It says he occurs here Rolling Stone. The flood of the lawsuits stemming from the Friday night fatal Astro World crowd control disaster top 19 as of Monday. All named concert producers Live Nation as one of the lead defendants with most going after Travis Scott. Festival goer Christian Priorities is seeking at least a 1 million from the Live Nation and even Drake in one of the suits that Legend Drake joins to as a surprise gets on stage and helps inside the crowd to a level that was out of control per, um, Paredes um, was at the front of the general admission section and felt immediate push when Scott took the stage at 9pm and was severely injured in a stampede that ensued and nine page lawsuit states right so obviously all that stuff's happening and then tragically you've got this which kind of details the, the victims obviously of the of the Astro World catastrophe again all really 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 incredibly incredibly young college students and stuff you got a guy here called Fred Franco Pinto Franco Pin Franco Patino 21 a senior from the University of Dayton Ohio that passed away you've got a kid here called John Helger um 14 years old Jesus Christ uh Brianna Rodriguez 16 you've got Rudy Pina 23 Danish again people that you would assume would be Travis Scott fans right all within their kind of early 20s young teens right and um, late teens sorry just absolutely Travis Alice Acosta the kid before that was Jacob E. Jurinik like really tragic eh? Madison Dubisky and then to make it matters even worse to make matters even worse you got this tragic story which is just, you know, tragic. Says Astro Watch tried to lose a nine year old with major organ damage, brain swelling, family says, right? A nine year old is fighting for his life following the deadly chaos of the Travis Scott Astro World, which left eight people dead. Now his family are joining away with a lawsuit being filed. Um, Ezra Blount went to the concert NRG and hosted him with his father and was on his father's shoulders when a crowd surge began. Elder's grandparents told. So he dropped from his father's shoulders, got crushed, and he filed to pick his. <sighs> Ezra was separated from his father and his grandparents said that they found him alone in the hospital in a coma, suffering from major organ damage and brain swelling. Jesus Christ. They basically got stepped all over on. And basically, maybe if you think about it, maybe he's only survived to this extent because he's so young, right? Like he's small, innocent child. Ezra's grandfather said he didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve it at all. He just coming into town to see one of his favorite artists and to be trampled like that and really left that hospital with no one knowing where he was. That's heartbreaking. So nine-year-old kid. And then we've got lastly, this story. 
I think these are two people on life support I've seen so far, which is why some people are saying the numbers are being underreported because allegedly there's a lot more people that have kind of died associated with the festival that people don't really want to name. I don't know what's going on, but it's a lot of crazy shit. It says here, Texas A&M student has no brain activity after being injured at a worst festival. It says here, 22-year-old Texas A&M student or senior has shown no brain activity. Uh, Bariti Shahini has been critical condition and is on a ventilator. Her family told ABC Tuesday morning that they're, they're meeting to determine what to do next. So basically... The brain did for to what I can see here. Shahini and her sister, um, Narata Shahini and her cousin Mohit Belani went to the concert together but lost each other when the crowd surged. Once one person fell, people started toppling like dominoes. It was like a sinkhole, people were falling on top of each other. Bel Be Belani said there were like layers of bodies on the ground, like two people thick. We were fighting to come up at the top and breathe and stay alive. Barati was taken to Houston Methodologist Hospital by ambulance. Paramedics gave a CPR on the way. But Nahati Sahini and Bellini had both lost their cell phones. They couldn't find Barati. Once once we let go of her hand, next time we saw her, we were in the ER. Jesus Christos. And again, the Sabbath got family for the, for the young lady as well. So if you want to contribute to that then i'll leave that link as well in the show note description for you to contribute to but uh, but uh, i think you pronounce it by bahati shahini's asher world recovery fund you know cute girl now has been basically left completely branded after just going to attend the concert so as much as people want to say that hey it's not travis scott's fault yes for sure it isn't but the lack of regard um, for his fan safety during the show is definitely evident especially now people are posting up clips of all these other musicians from various different genres making it uh, making a real effort to pause the show and to calm down a crowd when they get too rowdy i think this is in everyone's interest even in a flipping D dj world that i'm in right techno world when a crowd gets too crazy sometimes the promoter will tell the dj to basically play something to like calm the crowd down like basically a a what they call it um a crowd cleanser uh, a dance floor like when you want to clear the dance floor right to kind of get the crowd or to kind of recalibrate everything in terms of a mood people do that all the time in dj um in the dj world so for travis to make no effort to calm the crowd down and to really take prolonged breaks to do it is really kind of unsettling people coming out and saying that he couldn't because apple told him he had to stream which was crazy because in the end they did get a full show apple did get a full show in the end they went to stream a full show and they got a full show so maybe that was the whole extent of it then of course i think if i'm not mistaken this girl or somebody or the Barishi Sahini girl, she might have been the one because there's the videos and images of a girl that gets taken out of the crowd. The security team drops her on her head, right? Accidentally. They pick her back up again. And then a couple of minutes later, that same, where they are standing, where they pick that girl up, um, Kylie Jenner and Kendall kind of walk through with their, with their VIP guests that they kind of come through. That's when they leave. So it's kind of just, it goes to show and it? it's just, um, it's just bad optics, right? In terms of people are dying in a, in a general admission crowd, but then the VIPs have, to, you know, basically get given a clear passage to get back to their kind of motorcades and go back home in complete safety again not their fault but it's just the optics of it just look really terrible again travis scott's apology was probably the worst i've ever seen um doing a black and white filter video with that kind of fake distress rubbing on his face was bizarre why he couldn't just sit in front of a camera just talk really plainly and openly to his fans about what happened and just say what he can do what he, he's gonna do what he needs whatever it takes to kind of rectify this issue was out of the bat. I don't know why he didn't do that. The statement and the notes app was already classless. Then the video with the black and white filter. I just I don't know. Sometimes I worry for these people uh, when it comes to their lack of flipping soul and whatnot. But again, man, like another stark reminder, I think, overall as to how I don't want to say dangerous it is in these festivals. Another maybe stark reminder about like who you like picking your basically your heroes very carefully. That's a very maybe that's a lesson in this in that kind of stock reminder. Pick your heroes carefully, pick your events carefully too, because this is a newly founded sort of festival. It's not something that's been kind of um, honed and sort of perfected over the years. We have a lot of complaints about some festivals in terms of the sound, in terms of lack of flipping toilets and shit, and maybe drinking stations. But one thing you can't say about most festivals that you go to, especially some of the established ones, that people just don't just die because of crowd, you know, uh, you know not adequate car control they might die because of you know bad drugs they might have taken again your own responsibility you ingested that shit again you shouldn't maybe security should be or the people in the venue should be limiting those kind of bad drugs that come in but again it is a there's a part of personal responsibility in that regard but no one dies through bad crowd control most of the fest and most of the top festivals um not, not not to this level anyway so for them to do to this level obviously shows in some respects some poor organization and safety protocols were obviously put in place and then of course the musician himself didn't
didn't help matters he didn't try and stem the hype he didn't try and calm it down there's also footage of him talking in previous previous times about how much he likes the carnage and the rage and all that shit and now it's coming back to bite him in it is what it is um whether or not this will impact him overall I very much doubt it. Um, I am interested to see what companies like Nike do when it comes to his collaboration. Will they pause him? Will they delay them? Probably not. But the un, you know, the uh, the sad part about it is most likely that will definitely add to the value of the shoes. That will definitely make the shoes way more popular than what they are now because they're going to be shoes that you know won't be ever to be ever made again. It's like the young was it Ace Abari when he got in tr trouble for that sexual stuff when you know that video came out of him taking off the duvet off that girl in a hotel. They cancel his Nike deal or cancel his Nike Air Force that was meant to come out, but then the ones that were around ended up tripling up in value because they were basically rare, right? There's no more of them. They didn't, they didn't ever come out as a GR. As they didn't ever come out to the general public in that respects. So as bad as this may be for him in terms of reputation it's going to be good for the value of the brand overall and the value of the shoes because they're definitely going to shoot up and for in general you know nike you know doesn't strike me as the most ethical or moral company in the world so they're going to just do what they need to be done to kind of get their shoes out um and yeah, his career one stuff. I think his fans that still love him will still end up going, you know, copying tickets and shit. I don't think that's going to hamper things. It might just be a question of the partners that he's in partnership with when it comes to producing his shows, putting on putting on his gigs, producing his festivals, you know, brand deals and stuff. Because it's not a partnership that he has. He's probably the most brand friendly um, rapper out there, which maybe is a major hit that's going to be on him because he's so controlling of how he's images yeah, yeah yeah he doesn't really talk to media too much um he's he, they only put out certain bits of promo information or material for him into the media before that he was doing loads of charity shit you saw him doing some stuff in the park with some kids i forgot what that was about so there's, there's a very much calculated effort behind travis to present him a certain way and obviously the, the bad thing about that is once something goes wrong there's not a lot of material there's not a lot for people to kind of hank run and say you're a good dude because you've spent so much time cultivating and crafting an image that people are now going to suddenly slap that as part of your personality which may maybe not but you know couple that with the whack, whack apologies and all that shit and the offer to pay for the funeral which is in part with you better, better help and shit i don't know there's really loads of really scummy stuff that's happening in general overall going around it but again it's not totally his fault but he's definitely partly to blame and in these instances when people's lives are basically being lost unfortunately someone has to pay um whether it's going to be live nation or it's going to be him someone will pay in the end of it it just is a matter of fact i think um if this festival would have went off without a hitch and was successful he would have got all the it wouldn't have been Live Nation getting all the accolades, right? It would be Travis getting all the accolades and his group, his Cactus Jack, whatever, production team, whatever they're called. They'd be getting all the accolades. They'd be getting all the love, right? Oh my God, Travis has created one of the biggest festivals in the world. It was, you know, well sold out. The kids will have fun. Look at these great reviews we're getting, blah, 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 blah. So remember things go wrong, you then can't shun responsibility because if you wanted to, you love when it was going well, you also have to receive the love when it goes bad. So that's just the game. That's what it is. But again, force and feelings go out of everybody that was injured and, you know, suffered from the back of this hopefully this is a lesson learned that we don't kind of repeat these mistakes again going forward but you know that's why we have to we have to give credit to people like Tyler the Creator as well and maybe even the Playboy Kai they have similar sort of fans right in terms of their um their, their kind of uh, craziness with like having shows and even Tyler to a certain extent he's kind of dumbed he's kind of really slowed down even ASAP Rocky no respect ASAP Mob they used to jump into crowds and fight people so you have to give those guys a lot of credit for getting to a point where they kind of changed how they were on stage and maybe re-educated their fan base because I think you do have to do that you do have to kind of teach your fans how to enjoy your music or how to communicate with you online or how to behave in general when it comes to representing you as a fan whatnot and they've done a good job at doing that um they haven't continued this kind of rage mosh because that's a big thing in hip-hop for a while everyone's trying to create mosh pits right um but they slowly moved away from that and kind of just you know went about putting on a good show having it be well attended having it be a diverse crowd celebrating that respect all that kind of good stuff and it's kind of changing again basically rookie used to be swinging people in, st in the crowd now he's on stage kind of collecting bras and shit you know i mean it's sort of changed over the over the over the years and you have to give those guys credit because you know you don't hear of many deaths happening at those ghost festivals or concerts and shit so credit to them going forward but again i repeat to all the all those kids that were lost man literal kids there's a nine-year-old kid on life support and people are talking about whether or not it's travis scott's fault or not it's like at this point you should accept responsibility if you have somebody that has principles and you have morals right you should just accept it yeah all responsibility fuck it um because you can't live with yourself but the fact that people are trying to palm you 
blame off to other people you know there's supposedly there's a story about people getting injected with some sort of substance that was making them go crazy i don't know all these really weird distractions are going on all to kind of um subvert blame and shit um you got chloe kardashian over there posting first traps and doing her thing you know what i mean everyone's kind of everyone's trying to divert people's attention but let's just focus on the families focus on the victims focus on trying to find out exactly what her, what went on what occurred who's to blame and then try and go from there because you know until people have someone to blame someone they can rest assured is going to pay in some respect it's kind of difficult to even start the grieving process you know which is obviously going to be difficult because all these people all had their lives ahead of them they all went to a concert they didn't go to something crazy you know you don't expect to have received a call that you your kid is in a coma after the back of going to a concert. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. But yeah, um, RIP to all those lost. RIP to all those lost.